In my 10 years as a minister, I've seen all kinds of producer interests, whether it was the legal establishment, the education establishment, the environmental establishment, the agricultural establishment. All of these groups often don't want to see the status quo changed. There are people who work in businesses that invoice the government and they're doing quite fine. Thank you very much. There are executive agencies who like having power without having responsibility. And there are also the people who live in the Beltway. Or well, they live in London, they live within the M25. And they've been enjoying quite a nice life. They've been enjoying high asset prices, cheap goods from around the world, cheap labour, and they're comfortably off. They don't want to see the status quo changed. All of those people are part of the resistance to the change we need to see. And as Prime Minister, I simply underestimated the scale and depth of this resistance. And the scale and depth to which it reached into the media and into the broader establishment. My plans for tax cuts and supply side reform were about making Britain more competitive. They were about making us a more successful country where we were less reliant on government. And I told you we were up to 47%. Those plans were backed by Conservative members across the country. But we face coordinated resistance. So we didn't just face coordinated resistance from inside the Conservative Party or even inside the British corporate establishment. We faced it from the IMF and even from President Biden. So my warning to you here today is it's not enough just to have the right ideas. It's not enough even to have broad support for those ideas. We need to be able to take on those who resist change and who don't want change. And we need to be able to ensure that we're winning the argument enough to be able to do that. And we need to start preparing now.